Now I want to talk about the top five players available in the transfer portal. We've seen nearly 2,000 kids enter their names into the transfer portal. Just because you go in doesn't mean you come out. Just because you go in doesn't mean you don't come out at the same team. But generally speaking, you enter your name into the transfer portal to transfer. So we're going to work with that as our compass here. Also, timestamps. All right, guys? Recording this on Thursday. If something happens, something happens. Okay? So as of Thursday in the afternoon, these are my top five still available players in the transfer portal. At number five, Oklahoma wide receiver Mario Williams. Number one, I'm going to keep saying where they last played because technically they haven't transferred yet. So Oklahoma wide receiver Mario Williams had 35 catches for 380 yards, four TDs. He's going to visit Texas, which is interesting. But he was one of my favorite recruits coming out as a true freshman because this dude's from Plant City, Florida. And the reason I say he's from Plant City, Florida is because Plant City, Florida had gone nearly 30 years without winning a state championship in baseball. And he's one of the reasons that they won a state championship in baseball, both as an outfielder, hitter, and a pitcher. And he was going to play both sports at Oklahoma. Turned out to be an outstanding wide receiver, but particularly so when Caleb Williams was given the role as a starting quarterback, and you saw what he was capable of in the Alamo Bowl against Oregon. I expect him to be a high commodity. If he ends up at Texas, that's going to be a boon for them. I don't think there is a place in the country that would not want Mario Williams, and that includes Alabama and Ohio State, two places that produce wide receivers like you read about, but he also took a visit to USC, where outside receivers coach Dennis Simmons is. So we cannot count him out of that. Number four on the list, Tulsa's own defensive tackle Jackson Player. Jackson Player gets comp to Aaron Donald because he's short and he's powerful. I'm not going to put that on him. I am going to say he is six foot, 290 pounds. Okay? Now there's a difference between being six foot, 290 pounds with your name being Aaron Donald and being six foot two hundred ninety pounds, and your name being Jackson Player, but Player is just that, a player. Okay, twenty twenty one, he had fifty tackles from the nose guard position, five sacks, and a forced fumble. He was outstanding in twenty twenty. Even as Zayvon Collins was getting all the headlines for being the best player at the University of Tulsa in twenty twenty, and a first round pick, I think among the five that he is looking. To transfer to, we're talking about Texas Christian, we're talking about Arkansas, we're talking about Oklahoma State, we're talking about Oklahoma. I think you really have to give Arkansas an edge here because Jermile Ashley was the former defensive line coach at Tulsa. He's defensive line coach at Arkansas. And you got to believe that that's a nice place for him to land because SEC West, you know how I feel about Sam Pittman, huge fan of what Arkansas is going to be. They're a top 10 preseason team for me in my way too early Top 25. I also think you got to take a look at Texas Christian on this because Joe Gillespie, the former defense coordinator at Tulsa, is now defense coordinator at Texas Christian. Oklahoma State is always a cool landing spot for defensive linemen who have ties to the state of Oklahoma like Jackson does. And, of course, Oklahoma, I think, is, for me, a dark horse here because Todd Bates is the new defensive line coach there. Todd Bates comes from Clemson. And not just from Clemson. From producing the best defensive line in Clemson history and perhaps the last 20 years, right? So his 2018 defensive line was Austin Bryant, Dexter Lawrence, Cleland Farrell, and Christian Wilkins. See, I got it. All of those dudes were all Americans, okay? Brent Venables is the head coach at Oklahoma. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to be developed, He's got options, and that's what happens when you're as good a player. And quite honestly, when you're as good a defensive player because they don't make them that big, that fast, and that powerful as often as they make them short and fast. Okay, Number three, I got tight end Jaleel Billingsley out of Alabama. Okay, Last year, 17 catches, 256 yards with three tutties. For me, the most talented tight end at Alabama since O.J. Howard. And the reason that I do that is because 
in 2020, Jaleel Billingsley was returning kicks for Alabama as a tight end. He is as big as you might think he is. He also was returning kicks. Reminds me of Keith Jackson at Oklahoma when the old folks talk about Keith Jackson in Oklahoma because that dude returned punts because he would complain to Barry Switzer about not being able to get the ball because they ran a wishbone. He was outperformed by Cam Latou at Alabama, who's returning to Alabama at tight end, also was second in the country in touchdown receptions as a tight end. Cam Latou can absolutely play, but so can Jaleel Billingsley. And I think if you are in a pass-happy offense, you got to go take a shot at this dude. I really think that his talent is through the roof. I mean, he could go into the NFL draft still because the deadline isn't until next week. But if he decides to transfer to the right place, he could be a first-round pick and a top-10 pick as a tight end. He's that good. Now, he wasn't that good in the national championship game. He dropped some passes. He looked out to lunch. There was one play in particular, the first interception that Bryce Young threw, where I thought that Jaleel gave up on a pass and really hung his quarterback out to dry. But I also think he's a little frustrated because it ain't gone the way that he wanted it to go. But if you can get a shot at Jaleel Billingsley, go get him. At number two, quarterback, USC, Jackson Dart. Okay, so Jackson Dart, come out of Corner Canyon, was the National Gatorade Player of the Year. Okay? The other part about that that you need to know is Corner Canyon has produced some kiddos who can sling it. Zach Wilson, you know him, BYU quarterback, first-round pick for the New York Jets. And of late, Ohio State signee Devin Brown. All three of these dudes come out of Corner Canyon. So if you got a quarterback, perhaps you want to take a look at this place in Utah that's just turning them out. But the way that Jackson Dart performed, especially in the latter part of the season, really supplanted him as one of the up-and-coming quarterbacks in the sport. And quite honestly, forced Slovis into uh, the transfer portal to come out at Pitt, where I'm excited to see what he looks like. But I didn't expect Jackson Dart to go into the portal. But when he went in on Monday, we all drew some conclusions, right? Which gets me to the number one player in the transfer portal for me. Caleb Williams, okay? Oklahoma quarterback, Caleb Williams. Brought OU back against Texas and Kansas. And before you want to make jokes about it, it's Kansas. Remember Kansas beat Texas in Austin, okay? Just, I'm just throw that out there. Now, there are bad losses to Baylor. Man, a tough loss to Oklahoma State. But for like two minutes, Caleb Williams was the Heisman front runner for 2023 and was getting Heisman consideration or for 2022 and getting Heisman consideration for 2021. Had it ended for him the way it ended for Bryce Young, where, you know, you absolutely torch your opponent in a conference championship game, maybe we're talking about it differently. But obviously, everybody is in on the Caleb Williams sweepstakes, and they should be. He was great coming out of Gonzaga College in high school, which is a high school. He's great at Oklahoma running that power read. I think the problem that you're going to run into if you have him is if your run game is not going well, he's not the guy to jumpstart your passing offense. He's going to have to continue to help you run the football until he can throw it to dudes that have one-on-one -on -one opportunities like he did in the Alamo Bowl against Oregon. However, his former head coach is now the head coach at USC. USC's presumptive number one went into the transfer portal. This was all on Monday. News is Caleb Williams was in Los Angeles on Sunday, he took in a Rams game, and he took in a Lakers game. He has reportedly visited USC and UCLA. Even I can tell you, one of those is not like the other, okay? Like, no disrespect to UCLA, but you lost Dylan Gabriel to Oklahoma, okay? You got some, got some work to do before I expect you to land Caleb Williams. Okay, perhaps, perhaps you'll just tell him that it's a better academic school, right? Which is true, but also because football players are usually picking schools because of the academic success of one over another. Uh-huh.
Yeah, that's why all football players go to Northwestern. Like, come on, man. Like, I just... Let's concentrate on USC here is what I'm saying. Until he says otherwise, USC's the front runner now. And I need to tell you, I did not put USC on my first list for Caleb Williams to go to because I assumed Lincoln Riley would have everything he needs in Jackson Dart and Miller Moss. Incorrect, right? Owning that. And now that the number one quarterback at USC is in the portal, yeah, okay, cool. I can see it. Because with him, you could probably get an avalanche of other players. Not in, uh, Amongst them, my number five on this list, Mario Williams, who, again, visited USC and is familiar with Caleb Williams and has said that he wants to continue to play with Caleb Williams. I only think that he's taking the Texas visit in case Caleb decides to do something different, right? I think that two, those two are going to travel together. I'm also wild interested to see how all this plays out in 2022 at USC. And I just want to... I want to walk this out. Okay. Last year, I said USC has one of the most talented rosters in all of football. And y'all wanted to clown me for it. Fine. Okay. I thought Clay Helton's going to get it done. And a lot of USC fans it was like, yo, I don't believe in Clay Helton, RJ. I don't know why you're pushing this. Now that I'm like, no, USC is still super talented. And they're adding to it. And... They got one of the best quarterback whispers in the sport, and that dude has won at least 10 games everywhere he's been. Everybody's like, RJ's a hater on USC. What? <laughs> no! You're taking the wrong lessons from this. USC is always going to be talented. Always. It's about, are you going to meet expectations set by that fan base that is almost non-existent? All of a sudden, people care when USC's not any good. But they didn't care when Clay Helton won them a Pac-12 championship in 2017. Okay? What I'm saying is, if it doesn't go at USC for Lincoln Riley the way it had been going at Oklahoma for Lincoln Riley, I wonder how long y'all are going to let this man take time to figure this out. That's what I'm saying. And me to you, USC fans, listen to me, all three of you. You better give that man as much time as he needs, and you better give him every resource he needs because he's a doggone good football coach. We can say stuff about leaving Oklahoma, and I have. But the facts are the facts. USC is USC. They're always going to be able to recruit. You got a great head coach. Everything else is up to you, okay? If it doesn't go well in 2022, you wait until 2023 and so forth and so on. You let him be there for as long as he wants to be there. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.